welcome back to my channel. Welcome back, my name is Joe. Today, it's actually not a welcome back to the greenhouse, but it is a welcome to Berlin. I'm actually standing here in the center of the capital of Germany, in front of the Brandenburg Gate. And in today's, <laughs> Maybe you can hear in the background, my Scottish friends are playing up the pipes to mark the occasion. The occasion being that I'd actually like to invite you to a tour of the world famous botanical gardens here in Berlin, and specifically to take a look at their cactus and succulent collections. Come on, let's go. in the leafy suburb of Dahlem and uh, it's here at the Königin Luise Platz, the Queen Louise place that we have the entrance to the botanical gardens. So come on, let's go now. And as with so many other large botanical gardens around the world, there's always something going on, whether it's uh, thematic shows, there's Christmas Garden Berlin that's going to feature again in the uh, Christmas period but there's also orchid shows and all kinds of other events. Now this is the kind of graffiti that I really like. I love the main motto that they have here. It says, respect plants. Everything lives because of them. So true. And here we are in front of the uh, greenhouses. In total, there's 16 public greenhouses here, open to the public, and uh, it's quite an amazing complex. They're all geometrically arranged around the central largest of the greenhouses. That's the tropical greenhouse that you can see just at the back there, uh, right there. That's got a uh, footprint of 30 by 60 meters and uh, it's I think 27 or 28 meters high uh, so that makes it one of the largest greenhouses in the world and um, although it was built over a hundred years ago originally it's been renovated in the recent decade with uh, high-tech really quite impressive technology including the glass that automatically dims and uh, all kinds of uh, gadgets that are really very very impressive anyway let's uh, take a look it's actually a fantastic day to be exploring the greenhouses because it's nice and cool really because it's quite a foggy day here's uh, we're quite early i i managed to be here at nine o'clock which is when the botanical gardens open and uh, it's a Thursday morning, weekday, and you can see I'm almost on my own. Here I'm standing in front of the large cactus house and succulent house. And a first peek through the windows. Can't wait to get inside. Ooh, what's that? Of course, Echinocactus gruzoni, the golden barrel cactus. Let's go there. And this is the African succulents house. Wow, automatic doors. I need that for my greenhouse. So here we are inside the first of two large greenhouses that focus on succulent plants. We're in the so-called old world succulents house, the greenhouse. And this one focuses on all plants, succulent plants from the so-called old world from a European perspective and that refers to the African continent, South Africa, 
tropical Africa, but also North Africa, the Mediterranean, and across to the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, in all these regions, of course, loads and loads of succulent plants, and there's hundreds of species being grown in this first greenhouse here. I think I'll go for a tour first, just to get an overview, and then maybe take a look at some of the details. But already it is just mind-boggling, the collection of African succulents that uh, are in this house here. Just look at the size of these aloes. There's aloe trees. They must be about 12 or more meters high. Incredible. And there's more aloes and euphorbias. Absolutely stunning collection here. There's some beautiful pachypodiums here. Really large specimens. Incredible. Look at that. Pachypodium lameri. These these are the ones that you can occasionally buy in nursery centers, in uh, garden nurseries. Uh, they don't quite come at this size. Wonderful aloes, aloe Susanna here. All the plants are beautifully labeled. If, like myself, you enjoy drinking the occasional glass of wine, then this plant here will be of particular interest to you. A very close relative is Syphostema, and let's just take a look at this. It is Syphostema jute. Look at this bark. Wonderful, wonderful succulent tree. And now, look at those grapes. They are actually closely resembling the grapes that we know of from our grape vines. So, Syphostema jute, a distant relative of those plants that we grow in our wine growing regions of the world. By the way, another distant relative of the grapevine family is Cissus, Cissus quadrangularis and there is a beautiful specimen growing here. A climbing plant with a quite fleshy succulent stem. Let me try and get that in focus for you. Lots of open windows for lots of fresh air here. It's a nice breeze going through the greenhouses. Behind the scenes, the technology that's been put into these greenhouses is quite interesting as well. Obviously, loads of uh, water outlets. And uh, interestingly, it actually shows the different types of water that they're uh, able to utilize so it says here Regenwasser so that's uh, pure rainwater this here is uh, quite soft water from the mains and what does it say here can't read this anymore but it is also another type of water so they've got actually multiple sources of water that they can use for different plants and I guess at different times of the year as well. 
nice to see too that uh, when it comes to watering there's some conventional technology still being applied as well <laughs> thought going through my mind is how long it might take to water the entire collection using a uh, watering can here Wonderful specimen of Crassula arborescens. I must say, very impressive. The plants are in very good health and very good shape here. Senecios. Here's a aloe, aloe caras bergensis in full bloom. Look at that. It's got seed pods there as well. It's a beautiful plant. And look at this aloe barbare unbelievable it's it's a tree aloe it's about to actually touch the roof of the greenhouse not quite sure what they're gonna do once it actually uh, hits the uh, the roof I guess they'll have to cut it back Here's some more interesting Southern African succulents, calancos, or senecios. This is a fantastic calanco. Look at these huge leaves. It says Calanco Beharensis from Madagascar. That Pachypodium lamerae is actually in full bloom as well. You can probably just see the white flowers there at the top. Euphorbia milli or milii, well-known plant, actually featuring in one of my videos, a real recommendation to grow in every collection. Here's another massive tree form succulent. It's Euphorbia loicodendron. Wow. Again, you normally see these as plants sold in nurseries. You can maybe just about make out the individual stems and shoots, but look at this trunk. Unbelievable. Wonder how old this specimen is. It's got a fantastic trunk. Clinea, another plant from Madagar, Madagascar. It is actually a perfect day to be in here. Nice and cool. You can imagine when uh, we had the 35 degrees centigrade into the hundreds of Fahrenheit, we, uh, we had sweltering heat outside and unimaginable how it would have been in here. It's a pretty impressive collection of Sansevierias. The, uh, what is it? devil's tongue succulents as they're sometimes called but there's a whole raft of species here Sansevieria parva Sansevieria philipsiae Sansevieria raffili Sansevieria 
Sansevieria Grundy Cuscus. Sansevieria Parva. And so on. Gasterias. Here's a Gasteria carinata, variation verucosa. Beautiful plant and it's got seed pods and some flowers there as well. Another aloe, aloe somaliensis from Somalia as the name says. Beautiful euphorbia, it says euphorbia perulescence from South Africa. Wow. Oh, here's, here's another amazing plant. I guess, let me just get around, swing around here. Wow, look at this codex. That is unbelievable. Gerardantus macrorissus. That is a giant codex plant with the vine shoots actually that emerge out of the codex and they have grown up this column here all the way up moving towards the top of the greenhouse. Amazing, amazing. More aloes. Another tree, aloe, aloe or aloe ferox. Quite commonly seen in smaller plant collections as well. However, very different size, quite a bit smaller. More euphorbias. Euphorbia abas montana, it says here. On the label. Oh, this is a beautiful euphorbia. It's Euphorbia confinalis, subspecies Rhodesiaca. Wow, look at the coloration of this one. Fabulous plant. Another tree aloe, aloe marlothi, moving up towards the roof of the greenhouse. There's a massive specimen here of Crassula ovata. Uh, you'll know this one from your collection or from uh, you know many living rooms. The uh, money plant, Crassula. Ovata from uh, eastern parts of South Africa, it says here. Look at those branches and stems. Very, very impressive. This is a Aluodia ascendance. It's really interesting because it's got leaves growing straight out of the main stem that is actually covered with bark. Now here's another annex, a small part connected to the main house. Uh, and this is something again for the succulent fans. This is the Velvicia annex. And there is a couple of wonderful Velvicia mirabilis plants from Namibia and Southern Africa growing here.
These are living fossils. They're amazing, not just in terms of the age of the individual plants, but also that these have actually existed for hundreds of millions of years. So here's a really nice succulent collection. These are all plants from Southern Africa. Crassula, aloes, and uh, it's just a beautifully displayed collection as well. All the succulent plants among the rocks. Here's the uh, hoodia. More crassulas. Wonderful aloe. Crassula plegmatoides. And of course, lithops, living stones. <laughs> amazing, amazing examples of mimicry plants that are actually adapted to their natural environments and that are camouflaged in a way that they are hidden from predators, herbivorous predators that would normally eat them in these dry desert environments where these succulents would be a very welcome snack, juicy snack, but by actually hiding, camouflaging successfully within their environment, they are hidden. Look at that. If they hadn't actually put the name tags there, you'd actually really struggle to see that there are some living pebbles, so to speak, some living plants in between all these pebbles. So that's the Velvicia complex, very nicely done as well. Euphorbia grandicornis, a fabulous plant. So it's definitely worth a visit, I think, to uh, see the botanical gardens in Berlin. They are just an amazing, amazing collection of so many plants from around the world. Of course, for this video, we've been focusing primarily on the succulents, including cacti. So that's just a fraction of the 20,000 or more plants that are actually growing here in the botanical gardens inside the 16 greenhouses and, of course, outside in the actual botanical gardens. And there is a huge arboretum area associated here as well as part of the botanical garden. It's actually really easy to get here by public transport. And it's well worth dedicating a day, I think, if you're ever visiting Berlin, which in itself is, of course, a fantastic city to visit. But, you know, come out here to Dahlem, to the Botanical Garden, spend a day. Uh, there's some nice cafes as well for you to uh, take a rest when <laughs> feet are swelling up, like mine now from walking uh, for a long time through the Botanical Garden, especially the greenhouses. But uh, lots of things to do and uh, uh, you know a big area outside where you can actually just rest and uh, recover from uh, the many amazing things that you're looking at in the greenhouses and outside in the gardens as well. So this is where they then join on to the next succulent greenhouse. 
don't know if you can actually see this but the sun is slowly burning its way through the fog outside so I think we will actually get a sunny and warm morning here in the greenhouses very soon as well and shining straight onto the golden barrel cacti lightening them up to show their wonderful golden colors.